So we're here to talk through this easy as tapa from Serpon. This is the puzzle where we probably won't be learning tricks that apply to a lot of other puzzles, but it is a very hard challenge and you sometimes see these hard variations coming through. And the one uh, concept to do at the start is to think about how does my current notation for puzzle style work in this uh, setting and, and what more may I need. And for me, I more often use dots to say a cell isn't uh, part of the tapa, I'll shade, or some people use lines to say a cell is in the tapa. The thing that we need to be able to mark here is when a cell cannot contain a number, and that will be a way to know, for instance, like a clue like a five, which can't be in a corner cell, sort of the five could start here and can work its way into the, the center of the grid some, but None of these uh, immediate cells on the edge can be clues, so I'll just start by marking them. Uh, the one, two actually can be a clue on an edge. No, sorry, the three is possible, but this this will be a new notation we're using in this puzzle to just have a sense of where things can't go. And now we're going to come back and the the, I guess, most critical places in the start of this puzzle will always be the outermost rows and columns because uh, uh, clues against an edge have the most constraints. One thing we can see is that one on one can't go in this cell. If a one on one went in this cell, it would shade here and not shade here and it would isolate a part of the tapa. So we now have only three cells left for these two clues. If the one 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 is all the way over here, I guess we can mark something like this. We know the one 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 is there and the five is in one of these. The five can't be next to the one one one. So the five sits in this cell. And by the time we've actually shaded these, you can see that the one 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 has to move over. And we get to this pattern. We now can do a little more with the second row. We can start by again marking some cells now that we have two distinct groups of two or more shaded things. This one four clue can't sit here. We have to find a place for this eight. Uh, it, it has to also have a three three somewhere to its left so the eight can be no closer than the cell because the cell could be a three three but if the eight were here or here it would be in the same space as a different kind of clue so the only cell possible for the eight is the one that's one in from the edge. We now can say that this cell is not used, but we can also say this cell is not a clue cell because it can't contain a three three. So we come back over here. This is our three three. Uh, in this case, uh, two four, if it came into the cell, would have this shape and then a dot and these cells be shaded but that would isolate the tapa. So a 2-4 is probably here. It actually would spend both of those clues. We don't know that logically yet. Um, what we can say is that it can't be here. The cell already has two unused that are together and it can't be here. This has two unused together. So while I can't say these are not used in general across this whole row, the only place a 2-4 can go is this cell. And these are deductions that stem from that. We now get to uh, probably the first and longest sticking point of the puzzle. And you'll be thinking to yourself, sort of, where is there our next major place to work in? Um, the points that have the most stress could be this bottom edge, but that the 1, 3 can go in a lot of these places. The 1, 2 can go in a lot of these places. This is harder to work in directly. The other set of things you can then do is maybe there are rows or columns that have both sides clued. In this case, like this row and column have the 2, 4 clued, but that the same clue and could actually be just this. But this 2, 3, 1, 1 and, and a 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is a rather constrained clue, look like the place to go. <clears throat> and so we're going to start with that thinking. And you can actually start from either edge and maybe looking at the 1, 1, 1, 1 is easier. But I'm going to start up here with the 2, 3, and even just mark that it has to come a little further down. Uh, one way to see that is if this is a 2, 3, the cell right next to it is a 6. That would be shading these cells and leaving this unused, and I would put a 1 next to this 2, 3 cell. And so one thing you have to do to crack this column is to say that the cell is not used, and the rest is going to come from below. If a 1, 1, 1, 1 is right off an edge, like here, 
it shades uh, the corner cells because you can't isolate a, a cell right next to it in the top of. In this case, that's going to then wrap like so. And because this 11111 is next to a 3, the 3 clue would have to be here. And you'll see that it's actually denoting a 5. So because of the collision of this column with the clues to the right, this is not usable. Same logic up here. If this is a 1111 and this is a 24, you end up shading uh, one, but not both of the connected cells for 24. You can't complete both clues together. So this isn't used. The same sense that a, that, that a 1111 can't be next to a 24 is the same reason it can't be next to this 23. Right now, we actually know there's a 23 clue in one of these spaces and a 1111 in one of these spaces. If they actually touched each other like so, let's say 1111 is here and 23 is there, you end up shading uh, the corner cells around this. Uh, the corner cells can only make a 2 2 clue work and not a 2 3 clue work. In the same way, here they can make a 2 2 not a 2-4 work. And so this column, after doing a little bit of chipping away at the top and at the bottom, comes to this point where there are three cells that the clues can fill. They have to be at least one cell apart, and so this is the only constellation that works. Uh, now that this has kind of a new edge between it, the cell has to be unshaded, and we shade in the rest. normal corners. The 2-3 will shade in two uh, more cells. One of these, but not both of these, will be shaded. And we get to something like this. Uh, this is a good time, now that we've done this column, to look at uh, what's right next to it. I guess you can also look at what's below here, but we're going to look at this clue. We now, because of marking these cells as unused, know this can't be a 3-3. Three, three. With this cell unused and this cell unused with a clue, this can't be a 3-3. Three, three. Down here, we have three straight cells unused, can't be a 3-3. Three, three. And a 3-3 three, three can't be on the edge, so we get to where we know this is the case. This is our unused cells. The opposite kitty corner cell is the other unused cell, and these are the 3-3 three, three blocks. Looking across, we have to put a three into one of these spaces, so it's a clue before this clue. And uh, we also have to get this top out of the grid in the side that right now we have it pinned with all of these four cells that aren't part of the top up. So gotta come through here, gotta come through here. Uh, the three can't sit in the cell now, and does sit in the cell marks these all as unusable. So this is good progress. It gets us actually to a point where we have a few things we can look at. We can look back at this clue, we can look at this clue. I think I'll start with this to begin with. The one, two can't be uh, in these cells. It could be here, it could be here, so I'm going to mark a one, two there. Note that the 1, 3 on the other side can't get all the way to here now because a 1, 3 needs to take uh, three cells, or the leftmost, rightmost, and topmost in this case, and we don't know which of the diagonal ones, and so you can say that a 1, 3 is in the cell in column 2, and it has to have this pattern when it's one off a corner, the diagonal is more forced. That says it's to this. 2, 3 has to be placed somewhere. It can't be placed in the cell because that's in front of a 2, 4. It can't be placed in the cell because that's in front of a 6. These have to be the same clue for them to go in these spots. So the only place for a 2, 3 is right there. Um, this part of the tapa has to get out, and whichever cell is a 1, 2, it's not going this way, so it's coming this way. And that now finishes the 2, 3 clue. Um, Recognizing there are no more top of cells being shaded here, I guess I'll do this. Uh, that makes this be the one two clue. You can also see that because the two three one in front of this. And I think all these are now marked. We have to think about the six somewhere, this three three, uh, this two four will be good to think about, and we can do the six coming across. Let's look about connectivity. Uh, for a while when we've been drawing a lot of things. 
the new notation may be hard to be seeing where we're also using these circles as well as the dots, but this right now is a choke point in the puzzle, and the tapa has to come through it. So this is the only thing that can connect, so keep this in mind. Uh, there's a little more flexibility on this side, but here is another choke point. Where the top has got to come through. These three cells alone need to get out. This cell's also right now a choke point, and so we're going to have some stress here. Uh, that stress will apply when we try to put in this one four clue from this column. Uh, it can't be here because we have uh, already like a two block. If it were here, uh, I'm trying to see, well, the six, six still hasn't been placed, so this is a cell that would be the first clue from both of these. That's not possible. Um, so we get to where this is a 1-4 pair. Let me actually come back and mark this better. This 2-3 couldn't use this cell because it already has 2 and 3 around it, so the choke point actually looks like this. And the top extends through. If this 1-4 is in this lower cell, the two are these, and two more are these. So this is the four, and the singleton's a one, and that would strand the one on its own. We did identify this right now as a choke point. And so it's going to need to be the case that the, the one is sitting, the clue, the 1-4 is sitting like this, so that this is connected, these cells stay connected. We get this, this gets shaded. We do have to think about placing a six, and there's a real nice home for it right now here. Uh, there's not as much, but it's possible it could go into that cell too, so maybe we should work our way up from these clues. Uh, a six could go here or here. They're uh, in either of these situations. these cells get shaded. And uh, having shaded these cells, we now can mark that the tapa doesn't extend uh, through both of them. And this is now a good logical reason that the six can't go in the cell that would be shading this in the past. And so the six is here. That leaves just the space for the six clue from below. We've got to put in a three, three clue. This part of the top is isolated. You'll see if you look carefully that actually the whole right side of the grid about the cell is isolated. That completes this 2-4 clue. Shade in these, that's now an unusable cell, and we finish the puzzle. It is a rather challenging one, and as I say, it has a narrow solving path. I think it's the, the trick with any new variation is to think about how you're notation needs to update, and so what I did in this case was use uh, circles on cells that couldn't end up containing numbers. You could use different colors or some other notation, but having done that, we got a quick start in the top. We saw some tricky deductions to work through this column, and then we could eventually make our way from this corner out by taking advantage of clues that would eventually be placed. And so hopefully this uh, guidance gets you through at least this tough puzzle, but if there are some tricks to take for the future will be about thinking through the right notation and the right new things to be tracking in puzzles like this. Uh, in this case, places where clues could not uh, both come together uh, and using circles to just see when a row or column was really limited was, was what that was for me. So uh, we'll see you again soon.